and welcome to day six of our environmental data science class. Today we're going to continue working with our markdown, uh, but instead of generating HTML documents like we did in the last video, we're going to generate PDFs. And to do that, we need to use a program called LaTeX or LaTeX, depending how you pronounce it, um, which is a program that essentially renders PDFs and you can add um, mathematical equations, you can embed code, um, and it's a great way to sort of write reports that you want to send to, to members of your committee or to people that you're consulting for on a project. Um, and, it, and it just does it in a PDF document instead of an HTML. So the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna install Lake Tech using this um, MicTech distribution. And what it does, what MicTech does is it both installs LaTeX or LaTeX um, and a bunch of the packages that LaTeX needs to render formulas and things like that in a beautiful way. So you're just going to go to this uh, mictech.org backslash download, or just mictech.org would be fine. And here um, you're going to pick the system you have. So if you have a Mac, a Linux, or a Windows, you're just going to go to download. And then you're going to save the file. Um, it won't take super long to download this, but this install, once you get it downloaded, will take um, maybe an hour or two. So um, then you click this open, the, the thing you just downloaded. It's taking a second to open. Now it's probably going to open too. <laughs> and then you go ahead and install it, and that's going to take a while. Um, and make sure to do this before class on Thursday so that we can work with it. Um, on my computer, this is already installed. Um, but once you have it installed, you want to make sure you restart R uh, or and R Studio, And then automatically R and R Studio should know that you have a LaTeX distribution, and it's ready to knit your documents to a PDF. And so what that looks like when you knit to a PDF, um, we'll use the same example from the other day. We're going to go to our NDVI um, Heyman Fire folder again. And we'll go ahead and pop this open. Um, so this still has the assignment up and the answers time but here's the R markdown document that we did last time and if you remember we just clicked knit and um, it knitted it into an HTML document so we can go ahead and click on that HTML document and this is what it looks like this is the sort of nice clean version that I showed last time but this is an HTML so this is a website um, what we're going to do today is go back into the NDVI trace if I can click on the right thing and um, what we're going to change here is this output. So it says output HTML document, and all we want it to do is say output PDF document. And then we save that, and then now when we click knit, it's going to automatically know that this should be a um, PDF. And so first it's going to knit this file as a markdown document, and then it's going to take that document, and LaTeX is going to turn it into this nice PDF. And now we have that in our folder, and we can go to that and click on it and bring it up. And now you have this sort of PDF version of that. So this is really nice if you want to share something uh, that sort of has a lot of text and, and, some, and it can automatically embed some figures. It's a really nice internal uh, report generation. Um, so I, here I changed that by doing output PDF document. You can also go ahead and click on this knit button here. And you can click on the little caret next to it. And it's, here you're given options to knit to HTML, knit to PDF. You can also even knit to Word. Um, and so that'll sort of change the way this outputs. Um, so that's sort of the simple, simplest PDF, but let's say that we wanted to um, sort of maybe cite something direct in this document. So maybe we're writing a paper and we need to use a citation software. Well, to do that, we're gonna use um, the same sort of R Markdown setup, but we're gonna use BibTeX. So let's see if there's been some research on the Heyman fire. So I'm just going to go to Google Scholar. Um, that's a USDA government document, so maybe I'll, maybe we're writing about, uh, let's see if there is an NDVI. We don't want USDA documents, we want publications. Uh, maybe we're just going to compare it to the Sierra Nevada study that apparently did something with NDVI. Um, so, you know, of course you'd read the paper first. But here I'm going to go ahead and ask to cite it with this little cite button. Um, that's just right there. 
and when I click on site, um, I would just I'm going to click on BibTech. And what that's going to do is it's going to automatically format it as a big BibTech. And actually, back here, I can right click and do save link as. And I'm going to save it as a bib tech document. Um, and that's in my downloads folder. So if we go back to our Heyman Fire example, um, and we go to the Heyman Fire folder, which I think is still here. Yep. And we go to downloads. We have this document in here called site.bib. And what site.bib holds, which we already know, if we open it here, it just holds this formatted citation. So what we need to do with this citation is somehow insert it into our R Markdown document. So we can add a sentence that says something about, um, maybe we also compare the data to some data in the Sierra Nevada. And then we want to cite that because that's the sort of where the citation that we're copying, or that not copying, but um, referencing. And so here to, to cite something in our markdown, you want to do a, a square bracket, and then you want to do at, and then you want to reference the name that's in the bibliography. So here would be Brad, Bradshaw 2003 Fire. So I'm just going to copy that. And of course, after a while, after you've read a bunch of papers, you might have some of these names memorized. And um, now this name is sort of cited. Now this citation is properly in this um, document, but we kind of we also have to do one more final step, which is tell our markdown where does this bibliography live. So we can go to bibliography, and then we just add a colon, and we say, hey, the bibliography for this um, document is is in this file called site.bib. And I also pulled up another project that I have done to show you what a, a full citation bibliography might look like. And basically this is where you might have hundreds of papers and abstracts and all the full things um, in, a, in a paper. Um, so you know this is a really simple citation bibliography with just one, but of course usually when you write papers you're going to have hundreds, or maybe not hundreds, maybe tens. And um, you know every time you just see these at symbols, that's how you, at article Olsner, that's how you cite that paper. So um, here, you know, this is the Bradshaw 2003 fire. We've referenced it here, and we've told our markdown that that um, bibliography is living in this document called site.bib, and that site.bib is in our master directory that we're in. So let's go ahead and try to knit this. We'll just click knit. And now it's just doing this conversion from this kind of document to a PDF, and we can open our PDF again. And indeed, now we have a formatted citation right here. So it says Bradshaw et al. 2003, and then at the bottom um, we have we need to we have the the formatted citation here. So that's how you can sort of add citations to a document. In class, we'll go over sort of how to do this um, in a more complex way using either Mendeley or Zotero, depending on what citation software you use. But um, we'll go over that in class, and I will see you then.